This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME 273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I'll be covering section 6.4, the method of sections. After today, you will be able to determine forces and truss members using the method of sections. So first we'll look at some applications, I'll describe the method of sections, and then we'll solve some problems. Long trusses are often used to construct large cranes and large transmission towers. The method of joints requires that many joints be analyzed before we can determine the forces in the middle of a large truss. So another way to determine those forces is helpful, and that will be the method of sections. When we need to find the force in only a few members of a truss, we can analyze the truss using the method of sections. It is based on the principle that if the truss is in equilibrium, then any segment of the truss is also in equilibrium. For example, consider these two truss members. If the forces within the members are to be determined, then an imaginary action indicated by the blue line can be used to cut each member into two parts and thereby expose each internal force as external to the free body diagram shown on the right. Clearly, it can be seen that the equilibrium requires that the member in tension be subjected to a pull, whereas the member in compression is subjected to a push. The method of sections can also be used to cut or section the members of an entire truss. If the section passes through the truss and the free body diagram of either of its two parts is drawn, we can apply the equations of equilibrium to that part to determine the member forces at the cut section. Since only three independent equilibrium equations exist, then we should try to select a section that in general passes through not more than three members in which the forces are unknown. For example, consider this truss shown here. If the forces and member BC, CG, and CF are to be determined, then we would section at AA. The free body diagrams of the two sections are shown here. Note that the line of action of each member force is specified from the geometry of the truss since the force in a member is always along its axis. Also, the member forces acting on one part of the truss are equal but opposite to those acting on the other part. And that's very important, uh, which you can see right here is F sub BC is drawn to the right and on the other side is drawn to the left. And you have to be consistent that way. The three unknown member forces, F sub BC, F sub GC, and F sub GF can be applied by applying the equilibrium equations to the free body diagram here. However, if you were to use the free body diagram shown here, the three support reactions, dx, dy, and ex, will have to be known because only three equations of equilibrium are available. This, of course, is done by the usual method by considering a free body diagram of the entire truss. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. Um, first, make a decision on how to cut or section the truss through the members where forces are to be determined. Before isolating the appropriate section, it may first be necessary to determine the truss's uh, support reactions. If this is done, then the three equilibrium equations will be available to solve for member forces. Draw the free body diagram of that segment of the section truss, which has the least number of forces acting on it. And then apply the scalar equations of equilibrium to the selected cut section of the force to solve for the unknown member forces. Now, a lot of times it's uh, you're possible to write one equation to solve for one unknown directly so look for that and take advantage of that shortcut so let's look at some examples uh, given this truss and the loads is shown find the forces in members kj here uh, kd and cd so we're going to take the cut as shown by the purple line there uh, that means we're going to need to know the support reactions at A, and then we'll apply the equations of equilibrium to the left side of the cut to find the unknowns. So first, let's analyze the entire truss to solve for the unknown reactions at A, because we're going to be uh, analyzing the left section. 
So here's the free body diagram of the truss. And if we establish a coordinate system, you know, X and Y, and we sum forces in the X direction, uh, the only force in the X direction is A sub X. So A sub X is equal to zero. Now, if we apply, if we sum moments about point G, that'll get rid of the unknown G Y, and we should be able to solve directly for A sub Y. So let's sum moments about point G. That's equal to zero. That's equal to, now A Y, is tends to rotate clockwise so it's negative a sub y and it is two four six eight ten twelve meters away now the moments due to these three forces are all positive so it would be 20 times 10 plus 30 times 8 plus 40 times 6 and we can solve for a sub y and it comes out to be uh, 56.7 kilonewtons. So now we make our cut along the purple line shown here, and we now have the force in member KJ, the force in member KD, and the force in member CD. Uh, we had the two applied loads of 30 and 20 kilonewtons at points C and B, and we have the reaction force that we just solved for at um, point A. Now I'm going to sum moments about this point D, which is you know right here. That's point D, and uh, so first we have the 56.7 kilonewton force. It is two four six meters away from point D, and it tends to rotate clockwise, so it's negative. So minus 56.7 uh, times six. Now these 20 and 30 kilonewtons, they both want to rotate counterclockwise, so they're both positive. So we have plus 20 times 4 plus 30 times 2. And lastly, we have the moment due to S of Kj. It tends to rotate clockwise. It's negative minus S of Kj uh, times 3 meters. And from this we can get F sub kj comes out to be minus 66.7 kilonewtons, uh, so it's in compression. So now let's use the uh, equilibrium equations in the x and y direction. So uh, coordinate system is like this. So first we're going to sum forces in the x direction, set that equal to zero. So we just solved for F sub cd and it came out to be minus 66.7. Uh, we have a 2-3 triangle here, so that would be a 2-3 on 13. So we're looking at the component force in KD, which we determined to be 8.05 earlier. So that is positive x direction, so it's plus uh, 8.05 and times uh, 2 over square root of 13. That's the component of this force in the x direction and uh, plus F sub CD. Set that equal to zero. Uh, from that we can get F sub CD comes out to be 62.2 kilonewton. Uh, came out positive so it's in tension. Some forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So we have the 56.7 reaction force at pin A. We have these two forces, which are negative, so minus 20, minus 30. And the component of F sub KD in the y direction, so that is minus uh, F sub KD times 3 over square root of 13. And from that, we can solve for F sub KD, and it comes out to be positive 8.05 kilonewtons. And that means it's in tension. Let's do another one. Here we have a truss here, and it's loaded as shown. Find the forces and members ED, EH, and GH. So we're going to make a cut along this purple line. We're going to analyze the left section because it has less uh, forces applied to it. And then we're going to apply the equations of equilibrium. Now we will need the reaction force at F, so we're going to do that first. Uh, here's the free body diagram of the entire truss, and we have an XY coordinate system. Now, if I sum moments about A, they get rid of these two unknowns, then I should be able to solve directly for 
f sub y. So let's do that. So summation of moments about a is equal to zero. Now f sub y tends to rotate clockwise. So its moment is uh, negative, and it is 2 plus 2. It's 4 meters away. So that would be minus f sub y times 4. Now the two applied loads, they tend to want to rotate counterclockwise, so they're positive. Uh, of course, the 50 kilonewton passes through A, so it has no moment, but the 40 kilonewton force does. It's 2 meters away clockwise, so it's plus 40 times 2. Now we'll look at this 30 kilonewton. It tends to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive, and it's 1.5 plus 1.5, or 3 meters away, so plus 30 times 3. And lastly, we have the 40 kilonewton, also counterclockwise, so it's positive, so it's plus 40 times 1.5. And from this, you get F sub Y is equal to 57.5 kilonewtons. So we're going to analyze the left section, and here's the free body diagram. Now, if I sum moments about this point E, I'll get rid of these two. I'll get rid of this unknown and this unknown so I can solve directly for S of GH. So let's do that. So uh, summation of moments about E is equal to zero. So first we have the reaction force, 57.5 kilonewtons, and wants to rotate clockwise, so it's negative, and times uh, two meters. It's two meters away. And then we have the moment due to F sub GH. It wants to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive, so plus F sub GH uh, times 1.5. Now we can solve for F sub GH, and it comes out positive, 76.7 kilonewtons, and that means it's in tension. Now with some forces in the Y direction, set that equal to zero. So now we have the reaction force at A, 57.5. We have the applied load of 40 kilonewtons, it's negative. And finally, we have the component of F sub E H. Uh, it's in the negative y directions, F sub E H. Uh, and it's on a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so it's, its y component is times 3 fifths. And now we can solve directly for F sub E H. And that comes out to positive 29.2 kilonewtons, so it's in tension. And lastly, I'm going to sum moments about this point H, because that'll get rid of you know, the moment due to FEH and FGH. So I get uh, summation of moments about H is equal to, now first we have the reaction force at A, tends to rotate clockwise, so it's negative. 57.5, and it's 4 meters away from H. The moment due to this 40 kilonewton load is positive, right? It goes counterclockwise, so it's plus 40 times 2. And lastly, we have the moment due to FED. It wants to rotate clockwise. It's negative minus F sub ED uh, times 1.5. That equals to 0. Solve for F sub ED, and you get minus... 1,000, I'm sorry, minus 100 kilonewtons, so it's in compression. This concludes chapter 6.4, the method of sections. The next video will cover only 6.6 .6 frames and machines. We're going to skip section 6.5, space trusses. See you in cyberspace.